So the village of Sayward respectfully acknowledges that we are on the land. We're gathered on is the unceded territory of the Comox First Nations, the traditional keepers of this land. We're going to call the meeting to order uh, just before we move on to public question period for all of council to remember that uh, we follow a code of conduct. If that is breached by anybody, you will be asked to leave the meeting. Thank you. So public input. Maximum of two minutes. That the public input is for the purpose of permitting people in the gallery to provide feedback and shall no longer than 15 minutes unless approved by the majority of council. Each speaker may provide a respectful comment on any topic they deem appropriate, not necessarily on the topics on the agenda of the meeting. Each speaker may not speak longer than two minutes, but may have a second opportunity if time permits. Each speaker must not be allowed to speak in regarding a bylaw in respect to which a public hearing has been held. For the record, you would state your name and address. Anybody from the public? And you see what the corner said was you. That means lightning both sides of the mountain. I'm First Nations, Fort William First Nations, and I've lived here for over 10 years now. And I'd like to know what's going to happen with the speed limit on Sayward Road. Yep. Yep. Um, CAO, do you have any follow up on that? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just for Council's uh, um, recollection, uh, Mrs. Agnews inquired about the village submitting a request to the ministry to have the speed limit along Sayward Road reduced, and I have not had the opportunity to submit that request as of yet. This has been two months now, three or four months, like a year or two now. I put my first um, proposal in, or, or my first request in, approximately a year and a half ago, and I haven't heard anything back from anybody here. I can I can tell you that the CAO will do it. If he said he's putting in the request in, yeah. But there's a list which you have to understand, and I understand that's an extreme priority for you. And I apologize that it hasn't been done to this point. But however, there is other things that sometimes take precedence okay. that have to be done first. Fine. But he will get to you Fine. for sure. Question is that okay? I uh, just wanted you can come back and ask another question. Thank you. Anybody else? No. Okay. Okay. Introduction. Okay. Second question. Please. Second question. Could you explain, please? Well, there's supposed to be two and a half acre lots in the not. Okay. Oh, CEO can address that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, for council, I can inform council that um, Mr. and Mrs. Agnew have brought these concerns forward uh, at a previous council meeting and staff, myself and approving officer Manson continue to work on them. We've made significant progress understanding some of the previous decisions and um, Mr. Manson is in the process of drafting a report now. Uh, hopefully uh, in time for the next council meeting to bring some information and options forward to council in regards to the previous zoning, in the regards to the uh, zoning decisions that have been made uh, by council previously. Okay, thank you. As our CAO stated that uh, Mr. Manson, our approving officer, is working on that file now. Mm -hmm. And hopefully by I the next count. I have a mountain Sorry. to look at. Now I have yeah. an A-frame to look at. I, I understand. I have a duplex to look at. That's illegal. No duplexes should be built there. 
I have a house that's there that is illegal. It wasn't built by a, a professional builder. I have a, a lot that's got two homes on it that isn't suited for two homes because it's in, it's in um, what do you call it? A water riparian zone. And it was all okayed by this council. By this council? By somebody in this council. Okay. Staff will by somebody before. Maybe yeah. it was Ann McDonald or somebody that was here before that was put in charge. I don't know, but somebody screwed okay. up big time. Well, as I said, the CAO and John Manson are looking into it and they will have a report back to council. When will I have a report? Well, as soon as we get it first. I am so the come. richest First Nations peoples in Canada. Mm -hmm. And I want answers. Please. Okay. Thank you. Think. Hey, anybody else? No. Nope. Okay, introduction of late items. None. Approval of agenda. Sorry, Councilor Burchette. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ayer. I would uh, like to add a few uh, items uh, to the agenda here. Uh, the first one being uh, correspondence. Uh, the letter from uh, Melina Gratisar that uh, came to all council. I like that on correspondence and uh, put for discussion. Okay. So I guess I would fall under uh, FG. Yeah, FG. Okay. Sorry. Uh, just, just a detail for council to be aware of. Um, the item that's being considered was a late submitted item. I just want to add that detail for your consideration. So mm -hmm. thank you. Councilor Burchette. Yeah, I'd like to comment on that uh, through the mayor to CAO. Uh, we have the letter dated here June 20th, so I don't see that being a late item because it was ignored. Okay, Councilor Burchette, if it wasn't on the agenda and it came in the letter that the other letter handwritten was a late and did was not put on the agenda in time. So that's considered a late item. So we'll move on. Approval of agenda. Councilor Burchette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to go on to my next uh, item to add uh, to the agenda. Uh, under staff reports, uh, I'd like a uh, report on uh, the uh, UMBC or UBCM and what transpired. Uh, I believe a couple people went there, so uh, I'm curious uh, as why it's not on our agenda and uh, report on that, please. And you said you had other items? Uh, yes, also uh, a staff report on the economic development position that was posted on uh, May 1st, and uh, I believe on May 16th, the CAO said that uh, that position was going to be filled shortly or uh, information coming soon, so just curious okay. as to that. Thank and, you. The uh, CEO will follow up with you on that. And uh, the last item, too, is. Uh... Sorry, um, Mr. Mayor, uh, can I just have some clarification? Are we requesting reports tonight, like verbal updates? Uh, we haven't listed them, so I'm just wondering, are we adding these to the agenda tonight? He's requesting a verbal report on uh, UBCM. Yep. And so I'm just so. Yeah, which you are prepared for. I can provide yeah. that. Yep. Councilor Burchette. And then the next, the following one was a staff report. The following mention was a staff report regarding the economic development officer. I can give a verbal update on that tonight. Yep, that'll be fine. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Burchette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, actually, I would like a uh, written report on the, the UBCM uh, verbal okay tonight if uh, you don't have one written, but I think a written report uh, is due for that. Um, the last item I like uh, on the agenda is uh, it's unfortunate that an outstanding community member, an employee of the Village of Sayward, has been uh, treated poorly and with okay, history. Um, excuse me, excuse me, point of order, point of order. Okay, Councillor Tinsley, respectfully. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, we are off topic, um, thank you. Point of order on this. Personnel matters, according to the Local Government Act, are handled in camera. That's fact, you know that, and we will be discussing that matter in camera. Any personnel matters are not discussed publicly until the RISA report is done. Thank you. Let's move. I'm sorry, you 
That's that's interesting because there's unfortunately I found out on, point of uh, order. Point yeah. of please, order. Please cite to the community that. charter what the point of order is. And then okay, we can vote on it. My point of order is exactly it, as the mayor has stated. Thank you. You know you cannot discuss personnel matters in an open council meeting. All of council knows that, and we're not discussing it. It's in the local government act. If you need some time, we can adjourn and CAO can pull that up for you. So you have an opportunity to read it. I just want to make sure it's on at least the in-camera agenda. I'm sorry? I would like to know that it's on the in-camera agenda then if we're not going to discuss it now or put on the yes, regular agenda. Yes, as you know, personnel matters cannot be discussed in public. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Polson. I believe I heard, oh, excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I believe I heard you say at the beginning that anyone that is breaching the code of conduct would be expelled from the meeting. And I have heard Councillor Tinsley interrupt and continue to interrupt when you have asked for uh, a point of order and was speaking to uh, Councillor Burchette. So I think we need to follow the rules. Um, I recall at the last meeting that Councillor Burchette was expelled for one um, uh, code of conduct infraction. So I think yep. the same should refer, inf refer to all of council. Great. Thank you. Okay, approval of agenda. That the regular agenda for the regular council meeting on October 3rd, 2023 be approved. Would that be as am amended? Sorry. Sorry, as amended. Okay, one second, Councillor Polson. Um, I have stuff to add to the agenda also. Um, on uh, September the 5th, under the permissive tax exemption um, bylaw, it was recorded that it would be brought forward to this meeting, but there was also a second. Um, part of that motion um, that was R23 slash 241. And the question was, when can council expect a report from staff regarding the Nature's Trust agreement to provide safe parking for visitors to Kelly's Trail? And I'd like to have a firm date on that. CAO. Do you want to discuss that now or at the time of the staff report for the permissive exemption? No, at the time of the permissive staff report, Thank please. Also on the uh, previous meeting, the um, uh, lightning report detection agreement was deferred to October the 3rd, and uh, uh, I don't see a staff report on the agenda. CAO, was that just missed? Sorry, your microphone, please. Thank you. Uh, uh, no, uh, Mr. Mayor, just have not been able to follow up on that yet. Okay, um, is it reasonable to say that we could have it for the next meeting? I'll do my best. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Councillor Polson? I also recall, and I have a copy of the um, staff report that was um, distributed on July 18th, 2023, about the fire services agreement. It was extended for three months and possibly six months. And um, uh, council approved that extension and um, it was supposed to be um, on the September 30th, um, 2023 meeting so that village staff could review and analyze the options proposed by the SRD and then update council at the September 5th meeting. That didn't happen at the September 5th meeting, and I um, am very interested in where that report is and update. And I do recall from that uh, first meeting that the mayor had said that there would be a uh, report from the CAO of the SRD at 
this meeting. And so I'm I I want to know when that meeting is going to be. No, um, the what I stated was that the CEO from the SRD would speak to council if needed. Um, our CAO does not believe that's necessary. And you had most of the report completed, correct? May Could you just yeah. have him respond, please? I would respectfully suggest to this council that a decision on whether a report is delivered to uh, council is a council decision, not a not a CAO decision. So um, I think we need to take a look at um, the report and decide whether or ask for a report delivered by um, Dave Leach. Thank you, CAO. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, um, that report is is in draft form. Uh, your uh, just for clarification, uh, CAO Leach offered to come if uh, and uh, and present to council if uh, and you are correct. It was stated if I if I felt that was necessary. And um, to Councillor Polson's point, if uh, council wishes to request CAO Leach or someone else to present to council that's uh, well within uh, council's authority and uh, probably be, uh, I, I would suggest it would be prudent to do that at the time of receiving my report, possibly. Um, right, uh, and, and that could be when, the next council? I, I, I'm leery to make any promises, Mr. Mayor, but I'll do my best. OK, so we'll put out a letter to, or an invitation to um, to Dave Leach from this from the Strathcona Regional District to make a presentation so he has time to prepare. Yes. OK, thank you. OK, back to Rick. You finished? Thank you. OK, that the agenda for the regular council meeting October 3rd as amended 2023 be approved. Motion, please. I'll move that. Second. I'll second that. Thank you. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Seeing none, motion is carried. Minutes of previous. That the minutes of the regular council meeting held on September 5th, 2023 be adopted. I'll move I'll that. I'll move that. I'll second that. Thank you. Discussion. Can you use your microphone, please? Thank you. I have marked on the uh, first page, uh, number 2B, public input, um, direction to staff to investigate the process for speed limit reduction on Sayward Road and bring back to the October 3rd. 2023 council meeting and it is not on the agenda and I apologize to the um, Ag News who have been before council several times and I believe that this uh, is long overdue. Um, we haven't had um, any information about any um, request to Moti and um, I don't think it should be delayed any longer. It's uh, gone on long enough. Okay. And I can't speak to their other request, but um, I will at the next meeting. And um, uh, the minutes of the previous meeting under number five, um, this um, meeting had been adjourned by the CAO to a future date and then um, a letter that uh, Councillor Burchette and I had sent to the um, auditor was added as as the CAO reported on the fly. And um, I, I wonder um, uh, where the where the minutes are from this special council meeting um, that uh, we can't adopt them if we haven't seen them. And ha has that been moved to the in-camera meeting? CAO? Do 
Your microphone, please. Thank you. Uh, so I'm caught just a little bit off guard just because I don't have the information in front of me. What Councillor Polson is referring to are minutes that have been approved and are itemized in these minutes. Correct. So effectively talking about meetings, I, I don't have information in front of me from um, from the August 15th meeting, so I can't speak in detail to that. That though though th those minutes have been adopted so they're not the those the august 15th minutes can't be before you right now if i understand you correctly i'm speaking to the first part of that motion where it says that the minutes of the special council meeting held on august 1st 2023 be adopted so if they have already been adopted why are they on this uh september 5th agenda or minutes your microphone please thank you um OK, so Council, what's before you uh, in Section 5 of the minutes from the September 5th meeting are the recordings of the minutes that you adopted at the September 5th meeting. Those two sets Correct. of minutes include the August 1st meeting and the August 15th meeting. And those were adopted back in September. They were adopted at Correct. the September 5th meeting. So we, in case there's confusion, sometimes there will be multiple sets of meetings to be approved. And in this case, there's two sets of meetings to be approved. Councillor Paulson. They were adopted on the last meeting on September 5th, not the last meeting, but the meeting before. No, that was the last meeting, September 5th, correct. Uh, I, that is not clear to me, but we'll I'll, I'll move on. Um, so what we're on right now is just that the minutes of the regular council meeting held on September 5th, 2023 be adopted. And I thought that was what I was looking at and asking questions about um, things that are on the September 5th meeting and um, haven't been dealt with, for instance. Um, Mr. Mr. Mayor, could I? In, could Councillor I, Tinsley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I believe the point of this is to address if the minutes as presented here are inaccurate. So I'm just asking that council mm -hmm. members just focus on is there something inaccurate in the current meet, uh, minutes? That's that's our focus here. That's my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. And my focus is on what is, I believe, inaccurate in the minutes. Um, but on September 5th, we adopted the minutes from the uh, August 1st meeting. Hmm. CAO, sorry, could you turn your microphone, please? Yeah. Thank you. If, if this is a matter of recollection, um, respectfully, Councillor Polson, I'll just remind you, you were not the September 5th meeting, so some of this information may be vague to you. So you weren't at the September 5th meeting. It was, or um, no, no. Oh, you were. Pardon me. Yeah, I had the no, September 12th meeting here. mixed up in my yeah, mind. Well. Okay, so maybe what would be, what would be, um, Something is you may want to review the September 5th meeting and see the adoption of the August 1st meeting. And if you have any questions arise from that, then we can address it at that time. Your microphone, please. 
Um, I all, all also want to refer to uh, the letter that we received from Melina Gratazar. Uh, that's item 16 and um, the information that she was going to receive a follow up call from Mr. Gervais. What? The next yeah, we've already discussed I'm sorry, that. point of order. It's, yeah, excuse I'm me. Sorry, Councilor, Kinsley. Yeah. Councilor Kinsley, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, he can say he can say point of order and that's fine. But this has already been discussed. Councilor Bruchette already brought up that item. Thank you. Well, my point is that um, in her letter, she uh, mentions that she was not contacted uh, following the next day after this meeting. And um, uh, I think we deserve an explanation why, and she deserves an explanation why. So if that's in included in the late items, then that's great. I'll move on. Point of order, we're talking about the minutes. Yeah, Thank you. no, Councillor Tinsley. That's not aggressive. OK, <laughs> the minutes of the special council meeting be adopted on the 5th. All in favor? Opposed? To oppose? Carried. And that the minutes from the special council meeting held on September 12th, 2020. I'm I'm sorry. Well, you're here. You must not speak, please. Thank you. That the minutes from the special council meeting held on September 12, 2023, be adopted. I move that. Okay. Uh, CAO first. Sorry. Okay. We'll go to council first. Council Bruchette. Yeah, I don't think uh, I would approve the adoption of these minutes. Um, it says that I was present for this meeting. Uh, clearly, I was not, and I've never seen any minutes for this meeting, so I don't know yeah. what I'm trying to adopt. No, so, that was brought um, to me by the CAO stating that he made a mistake and it should have been Councillor Tinsley there and not you. So thank you for the clarification. You're welcome. Councillor uh, Polson. Yes. Um, I don't see a time at the heading where this meeting started, and I also um, don't see myself marked as excused. And I did phone and speak to the uh, CAO earlier in the afternoon to tell him that I would not be attending the meeting because of illness. And um, okay. I, I request that to be changed, to okay. be adjusted, that I was excused due to illness. That's easy fix. So the minutes uh, that was in discussion, Councillor Burchette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, before we adopt these minutes, I would uh, like to at least review the uh, in-camera minutes, whether it's video or printed. Yeah, you can request that through the CAO and he'll set up a time. Sorry, go ahead. So these are uh, minutes of the regular meeting, not the in-camera meeting. Okay. We we adopt in-camera minutes during in-camera in meeting. meetings. That's correct. So this is just on the regular council meeting, which I assume you can still view on YouTube. So all in favor of the 12th as amended? Opposed? To opposed, motion is carried. Petition and delegations, none. Correspondence. Council, do you have any to be polled? Councilor Burchette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, C, D, and uh, the late item G, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody have anything to add to that? Okay, so resolution that we received correspondence A, B, E, and F. Do you have a motion, please? I'm on that. that. Second? I'll second that. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Seeing none? Carried. Okay, let's start with C, Councillor Burchette.
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I agree that uh, we should uh, support Sayward Futures. And uh, as uh, written here, that the village of Sayward recognize the importance of Kelsey Bay Wharf and fully support Sayward Future Society in its endeavor to secure funding and resources to ensure that the Kelsey Bay Wharf remain open to the public as well as commercial traffic and that the village of Say would provide a letter of support to Sayward Future Society at the earliest convenience so that it may be used to secure possible provincial and or federal funding, realizing time is of the essence. Um, so the motion to support it as written. I agree. So that's your motion. Do we have a second on Councillor Brichette's motion? I'll second, second that. that. If you do, discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Seeing none, motion is carried. On D, please. Councillor Brichette, speak to D, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, with regards to Sayward Futures' second letter, that the Village of Sayward understands that the music series offered by Sayward Valley uh, SV, or the, <laughs> the music uh, for, from Sayward Futures, uh, is a benefit to both residents of the Village and uh, the Valley residents, and that Mayor and Council direct staff to ratify the current agreement for 2023 to include the past three events and the remaining three events under the same terms and condition as the six original events. And finally, that mayor and council direct staff to work with Shared Future Society to establish a working agreement for the 2024 Sayward Valley Music. And I don't know if what the full acronym S V M F S Valley Oak Music, Music Society. Okay, thank you for the clarification, Councillor Paulson. Um, Music series with the same terms as a 2023 agreement. So the motion uh, as written. Okay. CAO, do you have any comments? Microphone, please. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just for Council's information, I had a um, a good meeting last week, impromptu meeting uh, with the organizer of the of the um, music series, the concert series, and uh, he reported to me that he's actually considering whether the music series will continue um on by himself like whether he's going to continue organizing it um he reported to me um that attendance has been incredibly low recently as low as f i guess five people at one concert and that the series is losing money and likely can't sustain itself if the recent trend in attendance continues so i um I fully acknowledge that there's a request here for council to endorse staff working on an agreement, but I just wanted to give you that information as backgrounder that the organizers themselves of the concert series, uh, Mr. Sampson, I think everybody knows Mr. Sampson is questioning whether the series will proceed forward um, in 2024. Okay, thank you, Councillor Polson. Um. I have been very active as a volunteer with the Sayward Valley Folk Music Society and volunteering many hours. And I would um, hope that council would endorse this, um, this request. Uh, part of the reason why I'm speaking on uh, Mr. Sampson's um, behalf and just want to provide the information that his his rationale for maybe not continuing is because of such low um, um, attendance, but also because of the um, potential that the Kelsey Center would not be made available to him. And I think if they're able to meet the uh, commitments of the uh, contract and as it was renewed that um, that we should look at um, renewing this contract for a year. If he decides to not carry on with it, then that would be his decision and the contract would be terminated. However, um, I believe that a council as a supporting um, body 
um, should also attempt to support the um, folk society um, musical concerts and um, show that um, the, the village is also interested in having this arts and culture um, activity carried on. Um, and I would hope that we would uh, support this. Thank you. Um, in my opinion, I agree with Councillor Polson on the fact that we should support it if uh, Mr. Sampson or Sabred Futures decides or the Folk Festival decides not to continue at whatever date and time, then the contract can be terminated at that point. But I do agree that we should support it at this point. Right, so let's bring a vote on that, please. Councillor Polson, do you want to make a motion? Did you? Okay. I apologize, Councillor Prashad. So, all in favor? Opposed? Seeing none, carried. So, to receive, Councillor Polson. May I make an amendment, uh, an addendum to that uh, um, request and have staff notify um, uh, the organizer as well as Sayward Futures to um, attend and um, draw up a new contract for the following year, for next year, so that they are okay. aware that they can continue to book. All in favor? Opposed? Seeing none, carried, CAO. Uh, I'm just trying to determine the order here. If I'm if I'm to do up an agreement, uh, let me just make this, try to make this clear. Mr. Sampson came and spoke with me last week and indicated that he has to make a commitment relatively quickly about whether he's going to carry on the series into 2024 because the people that he books, they're starting to book that now. I'm just unclear at this moment whether Mr. Sampson, the organizer of the concert series, in fact, wants to proceed. Um, as I read this, for mayor and council to direct staff to work with Sayward Future Society to establish a working agreement for 2024 under the same terms. I like. I think the motion is to work with them towards that. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, you'll have a discussion with the organizers. And if Mr. Sampson is bowing out, maybe there's somebody else that's going to step up. But the option will be there. Okay. And we'll leave it up to them to tell us that they're not pursuing it okay and I, I so i'm just not i'll re i'll listen to the recording to see what councillor polson's addendum was because i thought i thought this was clear as it was written so i'm not understanding the addendum but i'll listen to it did you want to clarify your addendum please yes since i would like to thank you mr mayor since uh, mr sampson has indicated that he needs to have um a decision made so that he can decide whether he's going to carry on because I know he does have people booked for already for 2024 and I think it would be um, responsible of of uh, staff to connect with Mr. Sampson ASAP. Okay, thank you. So there's really not an amendment, correct? Okay, well, that's under direction from council to staff. Just to have another conversation with Mr. Sampson as soon as possible, please. Okay, so we voted on that motion. That's all done. Correct? Thank you. Council report. None. Reports Sorry, on Mr. committee. Mayor. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. I, I believe there was a... a an item G that was pulled by a scout. Oh, Councilor I apologize. Yeah. I apologize. You are correct. Item G, uh, that was Councillor Polson, I believe, asked for G to be pulled. Or was it Brichette? Go ahead, Mr. Brichette. Brichette. 
Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just uh, would like to acknowledge that we have received uh, your your letter, uh, Melina, and uh, I just want to understand uh, through the mayor to the CAO um, why this uh, wasn't responded to uh, in a timely fashion when uh, you replied to her that it was going to be responded to the next day uh, back to uh, June 20th. Thank you. CAO. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So uh, I can confirm for Council that um, uh, I followed up relatively quickly. I'm going to say within a week of the last Council meeting when this was discussed, followed up with the Public Works foreman uh, and uh, conveyed to him what had happened in Council meeting, the concerns expressed by the resident and asked him to follow up. And over the course of the next two weeks, uh, and if I recall correctly, and I think I'm right, some of which I was on vacation, uh, the foreman uh, emailed me to update me that he had attended to the property where the dogs were owned, owned on a couple of occasions unsuccessfully and also knocked on the door of um, uh, Melina. Uh, a couple of times unsuccessfully to give her an update. And since then, and I don't have it in front of me, but but since then, uh, nothing has happened. As council is aware, our public works foreman's away on leave right now. Uh, and perhaps what I will do is speak with Melina as recent as, or as soon as after this meeting in person, or uh, tomorrow just to see if there continues to be an issue. So you will follow up with Melina tonight or tomorrow more, or tomorrow at the latest. Is that correct? Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, so recommended resolution that A, B, and G of correspondence be received. Do I have a motion, please? I'll move that. Thank you. Second? I'll second that. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Seeing none, motion is carried. Okay, now we go to council reports. There's none. Reports, sorry, Council Brichette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, is this the time where we're going to get a report on the UBCM, a verbal? Not under council reports, no. The CAO is going to give you a verbal report on UBCM. And reports of committees, none. Okay, mayor's report. Uh, as I said, the CAO is going to be giving you an update. And as Councillor Brichette has requested a written from him, I was um, also attended UBCM and we had the opportunity. Um, I attended um, and I met with uh, two staff from uh, municipal from Municipal One, actually, sorry, for uh, Municipal Affairs with our CAO. And we had a um, lengthy discussion, probably about a 45, 50 minute discussion with that individual regarding on what we can do to try to have our council work better together and what it kind of help we can get from um, Municipal Affairs in terms of uh, dollars and so on and so forth to be able to give uh, courses and so on and so forth or training purposes. Did you want to add anything onto there? Respectfully, Mr. Mayor, I was just uh, interested if you're adding a late mayor's report to the agenda. A verbal report. Okay. Yes. Councillor Polson. Will that be followed up with a written report? My verbal report? Yes. Um, it can be. Will it be? Go ahead, CAO. May I make the suggestion, Mr. Mayor, that we uh, stick to the approved agenda, which did not include a mayor's verbal report. Okay. And perhaps if you want to submit a verbal or a written report at a future meeting that you consider that. I will do that. Thank you. Councillor Brichette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I did request a, at least a verbal report and I requested a written report that would be clear so we could actually know who you talked to because uh, you didn't remember the person's name. Okay, thank you. We're going to move on. 
Sorry, go ahead. So just for clarification, Council, I clarified this earlier that we've added two items to the agenda. Staff Report C, which is a verbal report from the CAO about UBCM as requested, and Staff Reports D, a verbal update regarding the Economic Development Officer. That's correct. So we'll update that at that time. Okay, thank you. Unfinished business from A, the recommended resolution. <clears throat> Whereas Purple Day is celebrated on March 26th annually during the Epilepsy Awareness Month to increase the knowledge and understanding of epilepsy, pardon me, in the community. And whereas Purple Day was founded in 2008 by Cassidy Megan, a nine-year-old girl from Nova Scotia who wanted people living with epilepsy that they were not alone. And whereas on Purple Day, people in the communities around the world are encouraged to wear purple and host events in support of epilepsy awareness. And whereas there is over 50,000 people in British Columbia and over 380,000 people in Canada and over 65 million people worldwide living with epilepsy. And whereas the onset of epilepsy can occur at any stage of life and does not discriminate against age, gender, race, ethnicity, religion, social economic status, geographic location, or sexual orientation. And whereas Purple Day can improve the quality of life for people living with epilepsy, create a society that embraces the beauty and the difference and help us understand how we can all come together and make the world a better place. So now, therefore, I, Mark Baker, do proclaim that Tuesday, March 26, 2024, as Purple Day in the Village of Sayward. I'll move that. I'll second that. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Seeing none, carried. Staff report 18, application for rezoning 18, Sayward Road, Adama Developments, Kevin Brooks Planner. The recommended resolution is that Council propose zoning amendment bylaw 504, first, second, and that council directs staff to report back to council with a proposed CAC for council's consideration prior to the public hearing. Do I have a motion, please? I'll move that. Second? I'll second that. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, discussion, CAO? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so a couple of things, as Councillor Polson brought to um, Council's attention earlier, there's a missing map um, uh, from this uh, staff report. Unfortunately, um, uh, Mr. Brooks is away from the office this week, and I don't see Mr. Manson online tonight. Um, I am aware that Mr. Manson is working out of town in a weak Wi-Fi um, area. And so I'm guessing that uh, I'm guessing he wasn't able to attend tonight. Uh, but I just wanted to um, bring to Council's attention that the the updates to the map were being made uh, further to just a small error that staff found in the map presented by the um, McElhaney mapping folks. And it, it's it's nothing more than the the line just the line the line of them of them on the map just needs to be moved over right now it's sitting over top of an easement and it just needs to be moved over slightly so uh it's not we're in first and second reading here it's nothing that we can't bring back and clarify at a future at a future meeting on the topic okay thank you council Brichette. thank you mr mayor the only thing i'd like to add to this is uh a firm date on uh, when we're going to get back with uh, the public hearing. So when's this report coming back and a firm date so we can uh, move this along? Thank you. CAO. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's not possible to provide a firm date right now. 
um, it would be important for council to understand that we're uh, first and second reading uh, is uh, one stage in the rezoning process. Um, this effectively now opens the door for staff to work with Mr. Adama and his representatives on uh, things like the amenity agreement, for example. And I had a, a very good positive, productive conversation with Mr. Adama last week, probably an hour long, uh, the night before he left town to work. He's out of town now until the end of October. There was several things that he and I agreed on um, during that telephone conversation regarding moving this matter forward. I won't get into all of those details without him on the call here or in council chambers, but there's some there's numerous things that Mr. Adama needs to do as well um, to move this forward and uh, we're working together to do that. So uh, I'm unable to provide a firm date on a public hearing. We'll work through the processes uh, that that lead us to a public hearing and provide council those updates when when we have them. Thank you, Councillor Paulson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through the mayor to um, the CAO. When I look at this um, bylaw 504-2023, um, I don't see any staff report associated with it. And it would be helpful to have that background information that you're talking about from uh, what Mr. Adama still needs to accomplish and what uh, the report from the approving officer as well as um, staff. So I would like to request a uh, staff report with the background information so that we know exactly what we're um, looking at in approving the bylaw. CAL. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just to just to clarify, there's a staff report here uh, titled "Application to Rezone 18 Sayward Road," and that's a, a that's a three-page staff report, which finishes with the staff recommendation number one that council give proposed zoning amendment bylaw 504 first and second reading and that council direct staff to report back to uh, council with the proposed CAC community amenity contributions for council consideration prior to public hearing. So that's the staff report that accompanies the bylaw. Just Councilor Polson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. That uh, page is missing from my agenda. It's missing from ours as well. Okay. Let me just double check. And uh, it's going to be an awkward moment here, uh, yeah, just so I understand what you're missing. So, do you have the title of the? Do you, are you missing? Are you missing page uh, three? Is that what I understand you're missing, Councillor Polson? That's on uh, page, are we talking about bylaw 504? No, we do not have, some of us don't have that in our agenda. Just to be clear, I do have that uh, staff report, uh, Mayor and Council. Well, that's the, the, the uh, Kevin Brooks report. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Brichette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, to the mayor, to uh, CAO staff, um, it'd be great if we could have uh, these uh, reports numbered so it's less confusing and it's a lot easier to uh, acknowledge what we're looking at and reference. Um, and this wasn't done the last couple times, so moving forward, it would be great if we could have uh, the information okay. numbered. Thank you. Yeah, good suggestion. Okay. So it looks like we're going to bring this back for the October 17th. 
Go ahead, CAO. Uh, I'm sorry. This is confusing to me that some people have it and some people don't. So we we just put them. We I just want to clarify what people are missing because we put one complete document into the machine and then it produces seven copies. Well, it could be. So maybe it just missed. It. So Councillor Polson, just for click. Oh. It's before the staff report. OK. OK. It wasn't in the frother. Yeah, so it is okay. there. It's the one it's the one can come. Okay. our village planner, right? So yeah. Yeah. it's in the it's in the it's in the staff report section. Yes, previous right. to the bylaws section. They're two separate sections. OK, yes. No, nope, we got it. OK, We're good. thank you. OK, so um, let me see, where are we? We're on this. We voted on. Number 12, correct? On this. 12A. The application um, give the proposed zoning amendment. Yeah, the first and second reading and I read the second part as well and we voted on that and it was all in favor. Is that correct? Thank you to get everybody back on the same page. So we're now on B. Council, you're all good with that? Okay, B, grant and aid request, Secret Senate Committee. Recommend a resolution that council receives the grant and aid request, Secret Senate Committee staff reports for information and discussion. You have a motion, I'll please? That. I'll second I'll that. that. Second, thank you, discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Seeing none, carried. And that the grant and aid of $500 requested by Secret Santa Committee and their application dated September 11, 2023 be approved. Do I have a motion, please? I'll move that. I'll second? I'll second that. Sorry, Brochette is second. And do we have discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Seeing none, carried. And late item C, staff report. Go ahead, CAO. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm flying here. Um, I'm flying here by the seat of my pants with this impromptu verbal. Uh, UBCM was an incredibly uh, positive and productive experience for uh, me. Um, and therefore for the village, uh, I attended numerous um, workshops or uh, speaker series uh, to do with uh, governance, economic development, uh, uh, participated in the resolutions uh, section uh, session, participated in a small town forum session, uh, which was uh, really great to hear all of the other uh, issues and challenges that other small towns are participating in uh, or experiencing, pardon me. Uh, the mayor and I attended four ministerial meetings and one meeting with um, Island Health. Uh, our ministry meetings were with the Ministry of Economic Development, uh, really highlighting um, and the importance of the village, uh, the village's grant applications receiving uh, due attention and any support that we can receive from the ministry uh, regarding the economic shift that the village is going through. The mayor and I um, uh, spoke to the ministry and in fact, we just requested of them if they have any special funding that could be allocated towards uh, the village um, doing some special uh, economic uh, impact studies, and uh, they are going to follow up with us. Uh, we also met with the uh, Minister of Municipal Affairs and had some discussions with them. Uh, I'm going to be reporting on some of that later on in an in-camera um, report. Uh, we also met with uh, Ministry of Forests, um, and talked about uh, 
uh, logging, uh, planning uh, concerns for above the village, above McMillan Drive, some concerns that the village has there and <clears throat> with respect to future development above McMillan. Uh, as I mentioned, we spoke with or we met with Interior Health Authority. Um, the mayor was uh, Interior Health Authority, pardon me, Island Health. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, the mayor was uh, able to speak to Island Health about uh, council's concerns for some of the decision making that's been happening with Island Health recently. And uh, the mayor was able to speak with Island Health representatives and ask them if they would be open to a meeting with a contingent of North Island elected officials. And they, in fact, indicated they'd be receptive to that. Um, and part of that, if I remember correctly, Mr. Mayor, has to do with a committee being formed out of SRD in part. That's correct. Yeah. So, um, pardon me, my leg is cramping. Ouch. Okay. We're going to take a 10 minute recess. Um, maybe longer. Okay, so at 8.15, we shall be back in chamber. 